So here we are in Orlando, center of fun in America, home of all the theme parks. Used to be one way in, you flew to Orlando Airport, but now, quickly becoming more popular, is the port of Canaveral, and you can cruise in on the cruise ships and start your holiday from there. This is the Exploration Tower at Cape Canaveral. And there's a museum, there's a simulator, there's all sorts in there. Never be afraid of public transport. The bus drivers here are lovely. The number nine bus will take you all the way to Cocoa Beach. We're gonna walk there and get the bus back. Canaveral is situated midway on the east coast of Florida, 60 miles south of Daytona. I'm walking on land sandwiched between the Atlantic Ocean and Banana River. Never far from the Everglades, it's easy to take an airboat tour, where you'll see wildlife like the Abysis bird. Humans have been in this area for some 12,000 years. From the 16th century, many wrecked ships left sailors to live among the Indians, farming and fishing. Jetty Park has a 4.5 acre beach and a fishing pier. You can see the giant ships pass with dolphins leading the way. Manatee, the elephants of the sea, often swim near the pier. It has 150 campsites and is ideal for families and is a wonderfully rewarding but very long walk. It's gorgeous here, I wish I brought my costume. Although there may be currents, there's not a lot of people swimming out there. Well, I've dipped my toes in the water and it's not cold, I can tell you, it's very pleasant. So we found Jetty Beach and now we're going exploring to try and find Cocoa Beach. Clear blue skies to the horizon. Sunsets here can be quite spectacular. Unfortunately, I will have left by then, so I won't be able to sample the nightlife, which ranges from cool jazz clubs to beachside cafes. But if you don't want to swim in the sea, there's a 50 metre outdoor public swimming pool and a 27 hole public golf course on Banana River. So we're nearly at Cocoa Beach. I think we've walked about three miles. So remember, if you are doing this walk, you'll need sun cream and water. If you can see behind me where the triangular roofs are, that's where Cocoa Beach starts and it carries on along under the pier and for a few miles. There's something very, very filmatic about a pier. Whenever I'm on a pier, I hear the drifter's song in my head, under the boardwalk. But my mind turns to film, because this coast is famous for shrimp fishing. The most famous shrimp fisherman was Forrest Gump. Eating on the pier makes it all extra special. I'm sampling the blackened chicken salad, but the gem is definitely the coconut shrimp, not to be missed in this area. A little bit of history about how Cocoa Beach got its name. It was originally called Indian River City, but the post office thought that that was too long. So one day, they were in the bakers discussing what they should call it, and they saw a packet of cocoa powder. And so Cocoa Beach was born. As always, with any stop, your first job should be to find a local map. I did it last, but at least it helped me get the bus home. That was enough walking for one day. Cocoa Beach was lovely. This way. <laughs> 